<laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Beautiful. It's winter. There's snow on the ground. We're almost done with the year 2020. And for that, bikepacking.com is putting on this really awesome initiative called Good Night 2020. If you haven't heard of this yet, it's a challenge where we're getting folks out from December 26th through December 31st just to bid farewell to the year 2020. And I had an idea while well, kind of getting some gear together, some winter camping gear. So I was thinking, why not lend a hand and give folks some tips and tricks to get through a night out in the cold? I've got a little bit of experience doing so, so why not share my knowledge? So in this video, I'm going to do just that. And if you want to learn more about Goodnight 2020, I will make sure to leave a link in the description below so that you can learn more, but also sign up so that you can be entered to win awesome prizes from bikepacking.com and Rockgeist. All right, let's get started. All right, so what I'm gonna share with you now is less obvious than some things that you might think of. So you're gonna to wanna to bring a sleeping bag, an insulated sleeping pad, a tent. A three season tent probably will work, but you can bring a four season tent, they are much heavier. And then I'm not gonna dive into layering while riding. I could do a whole other video on that. I've got a lot of experience riding in really cold temperatures or fluctuating temperatures. So I'm gonna leave that for another day. I do touch on that a little bit. And most of what I talk about today definitely is dependent on the temperatures you are traveling in. All right, let's get started. All right, so starting with water. Obviously water is super crucial when you're biking, but also when you're bike packing because more times than not, you need to use that water to make your food. So this is an insulated bottle, but really they're not that great, to be honest. They might keep your water a little bit warmer, but the best thing to do is throw in some hot tap water and during your ride, if you want water, I would just flip it upside down, throw it in a cage upside down. That way you actually can use this nozzle because it's not going to freeze here first, it's going to freeze up top first. The other thing is to keep water really close to your body. This is the WAM pack from Revelate Designs and it goes underneath all of your layers so that the water keeps warm on your back. This is a really great tool and this is what I use almost all the time when I'm winter bikepacking or doing a winter race because it does keep your water from freezing. That being said, if you are using a hydration hose and a hydration pack like this, you will want to make sure to blow air into the hydration hose because that will definitely be the first part of the whole system that freezes. And once you have a frozen hose, then you can't drink water. Speaking of stoves, we've got white gas and we've got butane. So this comes in a bunch of different mixtures. They call all season blends. Even still, these do not work very well in cold temperatures. So a general rule is I ditch this once it hits freezing for the white gas. And so white gas is great because it is super reliable at cold temperatures. And when you are relying on boiling water or using a stove for dinner, or even just a hot beverage, this is super important. All right, so another really awesome tip for not only when you are biking, but when you're at camp and you're really cold, is creating a vapor barrier. And essentially a vapor barrier is a non-breathable layer that keeps moisture in. So when you conduct heat or you get your feet or your hands warm, the moisture inside those barriers will not escape and thus will keep you warm. That being said, you have to maintain that heat. You can't just sit around and use your vapor barrier because it's actually going to get a lot colder uh, if you keep that moisture in and it gets cold. So things I use for this is just grocery bags uh, around the feet or turkey bags. I've used those for races and just for really cold days on the bike and those work really well. Uh, if you don't have a winter specific cycling shoe. If you are looking to purchase a winter specific cycling shoe, then definitely size up so that you can use one of these and or a thicker sock. The worst thing that you can do is to have it really tight because you need almost a little bit of air for 
the vapor barrier and for just the sock in general to create the heat. As far as your hands are concerned, latex gloves do that exact same thing. A dish glove works really well for that. Uh, and then obviously if you can, you know, get some pogies that kind of creates a microclimate and that way you don't actually have to wear a really thick glove. Uh, that being said, pogies are a little bulky. They can kind of hinder your bike packing bag setup. Uh, but it really depends on the temperature that you're riding in. So once you get to camp, you may want to have a fire. And especially with these short days, it's something to do. Also a good way to stay warm and just occupy yourself. The first thing that you're going to want to do though, before you even leave, is just check your local fire restrictions to make sure there isn't any fire restrictions in your area. The other thing to do is make sure that you have a lighter, matches, multiple ways to build a fire and or light your stove because you never know if one might fail. And then another thing to do is prepare a fire starter. So obviously in the winter, things might be wet, snow covered. So bringing a fire starter from your home is something you can do. Obviously you could bring a reg regular fire starter block, but you could also just use lint that's in your dryer. And Miles wrote a really great article uh, detailing how to use your lint for a fire starter. And I will definitely make sure to link that in the description below. But just use your resources. Think outside the box a little bit before you actually go out on your trip. So another tip is just make your life easier. Use these freeze dried or dehydrated meals instead of cooking an extravagant meal for yourself at night. It's simple, all you have to do is boil water, throw it in there and wait. And really they're super delicious and there's a ton of options out there. So another trick is to have multiple small meals a day. Uh, just boil some water, you can have some hot tea, you can heat up some oatmeal. Uh, these come in really small packages too, one servings, you could split them with someone. The two serving ones are really big, but having multiple small meals a day will definitely warm you up. So last year we went on a quick fat biking overnighter. Uh, it was super cold and then it ended up snowing like seven inches. It was really an awesome experience, but it was cold. And so what we did was we boiled water and threw it in the Nalgene and then put this Nalgene, this warm Nalgene in the bottom of our sleeping bag. And basically that kept our feet warm all night. And when we woke up, the water wasn't cold. It was still relatively warm. That is a great trick, especially if you run cold. So another quick tip is to unzip the top of the rain fly so that moisture can actually leave the tent. If you don't do that, the tent will create a clammy, wet feeling inside, which will actually reduce the temperature inside the tent. So vent the top of the rain fly, let the moisture from your breath escape, and you will be much more happy, not to mention your tent will not have nearly as much condensation in the morning. I can't stress this enough. Bring layers, bring extra layers, buffs, hats, gloves, socks, jackets, down jackets, rain jackets. Rain jackets do a really good job. It kind of goes back to the vapor barrier layer. Just bring extra layers because you never know when you might need them. And if you don't have them, well, you don't have them and you can't use them. So bring as many buffs and layers as you want. Obviously finding room on your bike might be a little bit of a challenge, but try to bring them, bring as many as you can. So another great tool to use when you're sleeping or in your tent is spooning. If you have a partner and you're with a partner, this is a great opportunity to use the body heat from each other to stay warm. And I think even Big Agnes and some other companies have those dual sleeping bags that fit two people. While they may be bulky, that is a really great option to stay warm during a cold night. All right, and lastly, plan ahead and prepare. This is leave no trace principle one. And this is the most important principle out there. Planning ahead, preparing for not only your food, uh, fire, bathroom, staying warm, everything. Everything kind of comes back to LNT principle one plan ahead and prepare. And if you want to learn more about the LNT principles, I will leave a link in the description below so that you can learn more and educate yourself when you are going out in the backcountry. All right, everyone, that about does it. I hope you took something away from this video. And if you have anything to add, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'm sure everybody would love to read those comments. Thank you all so much for tuning in and have a great good night 2020 overnighter.